that you'll never leave us or forsake us and that you've got us. We thank you, Lord, that you're just going to continue to open up paths for us, Lord, as, as we continue to acknowledge you in all of our ways so that, Father, we can hear you and follow you. Amen. I pray, God, that you have your way this morning in our hearts and on our minds. I ask, God, that we stay surrendered and connected to the spirit of the living God. Lord, I pray that you have your way. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. I know that she used to come here on a regular basis, and she was part of um, us even getting off, um, getting our start here. She was pretty faithful and here all the time and um, was a great encourager. Uh, we need to be encouraged by our friends, don't we? Amen. We need to be encouraged by the body of Christ, and that's one of the reasons that God calls us together. I sent a text out this morning to somebody that you're all really familiar with but I'm not going to mention the name. And I said, hey, I just want to tell you, have you heard about that little church called River of Life Ministry in Manistee? It's not very far away from your house. And I just thought I would invite you to come this morning. I miss you. You know, that's sometimes all we need to do. I'm not trying to make, I don't chase after people. Because if you chase after people, then you got to maintain them. If they're called to be away or they're not supposed to be here anymore or they're offended or whatever, you know. But um, I do reach out to people. And then if God puts somebody on my heart, I know that I'm supposed to reach out to them. And I try to remember how their personality is and, and, and just... Um, it's, it's just like our love language with each other. And it's so important that we have that, right? And so anyways, I, I was hoping that maybe this person would come. They're not here today, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not released from the Lord not to reach out every once in a while. So once in a great, great while, I reach out. Um, and people probably know that um, about me if, if you've been gone for any length of time. But most of our people are pretty faithful, and they're here unless they're sick or really dealing with something. Some, well, some people just, yeah. Can I just tell you a story about Shay? Um, being that he spoke up. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I was in prayer, and the Lord started speaking to me about the body of Christ. And, and he actually had showed me that Shay um, was struggling and wanted to leave River of Life. But God was not going to let him leave. And then the Lord also showed me another couple that wasn't struggling with the river of life, but God was going to move them to another place. And so I had told my husband, and, and it was like a few, it was probably four or five months later, um, Shay started not making it to church very often. Uh, but Shelly was coming, and Shay wasn't making it to church very often, but Shelly was coming. And so I would reach out a little bit here and there to Shay and just let him know that we cared about him and loved him. And I knew that he wasn't going anywhere as much as he wanted to. God had called him to be part of River of Life and to um, be one of my spiritual sons. And he just couldn't run away, no matter how hard he tried. And so he was gone for I don't know how many months, Shay. It was... Yeah, two or three, and I, I didn't bug him, you know. But finally, you know, he, he starts coming back to church, and we just act like he was never gone. And uh, he comes to me one day, he goes, you know, I was trying to leave this church. I didn't want to come anymore, but God wouldn't let me. I said, I know. <laughs> I know. You know, but Shelly would come. I would encourage her, and she would encourage me. Shay's going to be okay. God said it's happening. He's going through something. But we always want him here because he wants to be here. And so um, because if you're here for me or you're here for Dan or you're here because, you know, Craig got a hold of you and said you need to be here, now we need to do that sometimes with each other, but you know what I'm saying, um, then you're here for the wrong reason. And so sometimes we need that little elbow, like, don't you know that you should just get up and, and go to church? I'll give you a good way to get people out of bed in the morning that don't want to get out of bed, especially in the winter. Put some marbles in the freezer, and then when they're, you're trying to get them up and they don't want to get up you just put the marbles in the bed and every way they roll the marbles follow yeah just kidding just kidding <laughs> well now you have a new one Craig you know or Sharon has or you know most of our kids are raised you know but yeah so um but anyways um 
I just really been thinking about the body and how we're called to come together and what, what God has purposed purposes for. And if you were here on Thursday, um, I just really talked about uh, uh, what I had seen and God speaking to me. And what I had seen is a picture of, of Mary and Elizabeth, and they were holding hands. And Elizabeth had her head tilted back with a big smile on her face. And of course, us that know the story that Jesus, you know, was in the belly of Mary, and 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 Elizabeth was carrying John, and her belly, John leaped within her belly. That absolutely shows life in the womb. It's true. There is life in the womb. It's biblical. Um, but anyways, that wasn't what he showed me. But what he showed me was that the the presence of God, of Jesus that was in the womb of Mary is like us carrying the presence of God within us in the spirit. And so that when we come to other people and other believers even, there should be a leap within us, something like that's going to get you, start getting you excited. And if we hold each other accountable, we won't always go into negative places and, and go into negative conversation because that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be carrying the hope of the future, the hope of life, the hope of the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so um, when I heard that from God, he said, just like Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary and birthed, and that's the celebration that we're having right now, and Jesus is the reason for the season, he came to save the world. He says, so are my people. They are carrying the presence of Jesus within them, and it's to save the world. Because the world needs Jesus, right? And so, but if we don't understand that we're truly carrying the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and everything that he is within us, we're going to miss it. and We're not going to be able to help other people. And sometimes even believers need help, right? Yeah. But anyways, that's not where I'm going. I just felt like <laughs> that's where I was supposed to start. Um, but... I want to read this this morning. This, of course, is my go-to prayer. And, and so it says, I know in whom I believe. Do you know in whom you believe? Yes. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep whatever I commitment to him. Do you believe that? This is the word. So I know in whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he being God is able to keep whatever I commit to him. So today, what are you going to commit to him? <laughs> Your relationships, your job, your spiritual walk, your marriage, right? Marriages aren't necessarily made in heaven. <laughs> people say, oh, you know, marriages are made. No, not really, because a lot of times flesh people marry. I did. And, you know, God says that when, when I bring people together, no man will put asunder. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a great, ha, let's, you know, we're going to be married forever. There's so many divorces in the world. But you want to know something? Christ is still with us. He's not surprised. He's still with us. So will you commit your past into his hands so that it doesn't affect your future to a place where you stay in the past so that you can never be affected for the future? Will you believe him regardless of what your body says? Will you believe him? You know, yesterday, I'm going to come back to this. I think. I always say that stuff, and then I don't always get back there. But yesterday, we had... Um, um, April's father's service and you know and I got to hear a lot of stuff about Richard and you know Richard had a lot of names Richard, Richie, Nahobi, um, Dick you know he just Richard and he was he was a very interesting man and um, but this is one thing that I had in my heart I really wanted to say but I was telling Jan this morning I never got to say it because you never know how the service is going to go because you never know who the people are going to be in there but one thing that God had showed me about people and and Richard being one of them that he didn't allow his past to dictate his future Amen. and I feel like we need to look at that today because some of us still kind of live in the past and we live in a place of failure we live in a place of what we consider failure but maybe God did, doesn't consider it failure he yeah. considers it a stepping stone in your life and in my life right. and so but often if we allow that that past to dictate our future instead of taking that past and using it for the glory of the kingdom of heaven, it can still t t take you back to a sad place. 
you know, or it can take you back even to a happy place which you measure everything to that one happy moment in your life and you're never satisfied with the new that God has given you. The word of God says, hey, letting go of those things behind and pressing on to the high call of God in Christ Jesus. So you have to be in Christ Jesus and keep going forward to the high call because the high call is greater than you and I. It says, hey, don't you realize that now, right now, I'm doing a new thing in your life. That you might be in the desert and you might even be in the wasteland. But I, being God, will bring forth new rivers and streams so that you can come and see life in the midst of your trials and tribulations. But see, if we sat with blinders on and all we see is what's right before our eyes, instead of looking beyond into the hope of our true future, we're going to allow all of our circumstances to dictate our future. So now I'm taking the now. I don't know where everybody's at now. I know where I'm at now. We're going into a brand new season. It's a little scary. I'm not in fear, but it's a little scary. And so I'm trying to weigh it out. And if, if you're anything like me, I like to know beforehand the way things are going to be. And I like to be the driver of my future. And it can't be that way. I have to trust God. Yes. Right? And so... Um, I want you to know that if you're in a dry place, if you're in a desert land, that go set at the feet of Jesus and lay your burdens down and let him pour into you new life, new water. It's living water. You've been drinking salty water. And I don't mean salty water from the kingdom of heaven. The water that, that is it's just salty, it makes you dry. And you can't drink anymore because it's nasty. But God wants to give us new water, and he wants to give us new wine, right? He wants to do new things. And so what are you going to commit into his hands today? Because, again, my friend reminded me of this this week. I wasn't too happy about it. But, you know, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and therefore I speak life into what? So I'm thinking about Dan's retirement, and I'm thinking about the financial part of it, and, I'm, and I'm, I've got all this stuff going on in my head. I was gone for several weeks. I come back. Dan and I sit at, down at the table. I'm like, hey. We got to talk about this because now I realize that, you know, we're going to pay $3,000 more taxes and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I don't know what you're going to bring home anymore. You know, things just aren't going to be consistent. And now I'm going to make less because we have to pay more into taxes. I mean, I'm just laying it all on the table. And um, so Dan started talking to me and he wasn't helping me. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally looked at him and I said, Dan. I need you to be extremely positive right now. I need you to tell me, babe, everything's going to be okay. I need you to encourage me because right now I'm freaking out. This is called freak out, you know. And so he's like, okay, babe, everything is going to be okay. Don't worry. I'll do whatever it takes. If I have to get a side job to make up the difference, I, I said, that's exactly what I need to hear. Now I have peace because I like to be the driver. Now he's, he's, he really means it. He's, he's a man of integrity. He will take care of our family. But in my freak out, he was like, he was freaking with me just a little bit. And, and I'm like, you can't do that. Don't listen to me. Give me something that's going to change my mind. Give me life. Bring me to a new level because I am at the tip side right now. Well, that's Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. Amen. That's a perfect situation in a normal, everyday life. And we need to encourage one another. We need to build each other. I, he's, now, is he blowing smoke? No, because I know he'll go get a job. He will if he needed to. But he's not going to need to. So I'm like, I'm like freaking out a little bit. I'm having a freak out day again. And then I hear, uh, don't be talking like that because that it, the power is in your tongue. Remember, I'm like, Ew, yes, okay, I just renounce that. Doggone it. You know, it, but this is life. We go through it every single day. But God wants us to lay it all down. Yes. Yes. Spray and Frank are sitting over here with a brand new house and an old house. And they have to depend on God to be able to do both right now. And I'm sure you've had a few freak out moments. And I hope you encouraged each other. Because if you're both freaking out at the same time, disaster hits, right? And then, but somebody, God, see the wisdom of God will work through the people in our lives to help us overcome these fears. And they're, they're real obstacles. Like, this is like reality here, you know, but yet God wants to do a great thing. Well, one, he wants me to, to like not be in the driver's seat. And, and then I need my husband to not agree with me, not be like, I understand. No, no. Joyce, you need to listen. Now, everything's going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. No matter what, it's going to be okay. 
I'm super excited about the retirement because, Dan, there's so much to be done. And, and he needs to step into these things, and he couldn't do it with everything else. And he has a desire to, to go into the jail, and he has a desire to, to go into um, people's homes. And, you know, that's one of the calls on his life. And so I know that, there's, that we can do that. Um, I didn't have time to do all that. He can do that, and then he'll build up a team of people to do that with him because there's other people in this church that has a desire to pour into people's lives. <coughs> so, <laughs> speak life. <coughs> speak life, right? And he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. What about you? I'm giving you all my examples, but what about you? Come on, church. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world, right? Because we have to believe that because in the world, all of our opposition comes from the world. And we have to know who we are in Christ. And if we don't believe what we say, it's just, oh, it's a cute little Christian. He's saying, no, you got to believe it. you got to be in that place. And sometimes you got to go through hardship to realize the truth and the revelation of that scripture right there. I personally don't like those encounters. I would rather just believe because it says so, but sometimes I say it and I don't believe it, but by the end of a trial or something that I go through, I realize how great God really is. I'll never forget when he showed me who he was in Jaira. And here I'm talking about Jaira again, right? But no, Jaira, I'll never forget it. It was, it was a year and a half, maybe two-year walk of, of junk, of stuff, dirty, just dirty laundry. No matter how you put it out, there's dirty laundry. And um, laundry mats are expensive to go to, aren't they? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Costs a lot. Yeah. 50 bucks yeah. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in there. But um, anyways... By the time we got through this terrible fight, it was a financial fight, and um, not it wasn't a financial fight, it was costing us financially tremendous amounts of money. I just really didn't understand it, but this is what happened. By the time we got to the end of the financial fight, it didn't change. Oh my gosh, it didn't change the whole time, and I quoted scripture right out of the word. God, this is your word, this is who you are. You need to do this for me, like now. It don't work that way. But what happened in the end, humble heart before the Lord. God, I just don't get it. I know that I believed that you would do this for us, and you didn't do it. I believed your word, and it didn't happen. But see, I believed the word for it to happen the way that I wanted it to happen, my time. That I know what's best for me, and God wanted me to know that he knew what was best for me. It was not best for me to be paying that kind of money out. But in the end, with a humble heart before the Lord, I'm like, I don't get it. What happened? I don't get this. And he said, didn't you always have enough? Amen. Didn't you always have enough? Do you think I won't make sure that you have enough Amen. the rest of your life Amen. despite the outcome? Amen. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. You're Jehovah Jireh, like in a new way to me. Amen. We've always had enough, and we still always have enough. Yes. And if I wouldn't have went through that, I wouldn't have met Jehovah Jireh on the level that I know him yes. at now. Amen. So now that I'm here again, like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. With and I still have not lost who I met and that intimacy that I have and that trust that I have in his provision. But you know how sometimes we want more? <laughs> That'd be me. Like, God, I want more. I want to have a savings account. I want to have this and I want to have that. And you can't take it with you. What if I asked you to give it all? Would you? So anyways, I just wanted to tell you that story because Dan needed to learn how to encourage me. <laughs> But I want to encourage you today. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world, and he will give you the wisdom that you need to, uh, to make the right decisions in your financial situations. He will give you the wisdom to figure things out in him as you acknowledge him. He will give you what you need. You'll never go without if you will listen to him. He promises to provide. 
and he will. But there's times we're a little bit, um, we like squander away our inheritance from heaven. You know, we squander away our money and we squander away our time and we squander away these things. And God is providing all of this for us so that our lives are enhanced so that he can use you and me to bless others. Isn't it cool to go through Starbucks and somebody bought your coffee? I think that's just the coolest thing. Now, you may have done that a hundred times, but when it happens to you, you're like, wow, somebody else, like, wow, I'm not the first one that discovered it. Just kidding. But um, I think it's amazing that when we bless others, we truly are blessed. Amen. Amen. That's the spirit of Christmas. Yes. That's the spirit of this world. That's the spirit of love. Amen. Right? Amen. So he that is in you, Bobby, is greater than he that is in the world. And God is saying it's time for you to see yourself as he sees you. He says sometimes you don't see you as, as who you really are in Christ because when you look in the mirror, you see who you are in the world. And God says that he wants you to turn. Do you ever see those magnifying mirrors like women use them all the time to pluck their eyebrows and stuff? That's what I see. I see in your future in Christ that, that it's going to turn around and God's going to start to magnify so that you can see who you are. Amen. Because God says that poverty is not to be part of your life. Poverty is a generation curse. May I just touch you for just a moment? Because I want to know if you're ready to be released from that curse in your family. Amen. I'm just hearing that this morning. God has given you wisdom and talents and gifts that are so amazing. Amen. He says that you are the head and not the tail, that you're greater than you ever will know. And you need people like Dan in your life and other believers to encourage you. Reach out, says the Lord, because he says they will help you accomplish the things and the desires within your heart. Amen. So, Father, now in the name of Jesus, I just release this man from the mentality in the mind as you renew it by your love as Jehovah Jireh. You have provided for him and his family in so many ways through all their trials and tribulations. Amen. These things did not come from you, but you have Thank been you there. Lord. You have showed up. You have provided for his family, and you have provided, Lord, even through him going to work and doing what he needs to do. Sometimes Thank his you, decisions are hard because people pull at him, God, but help him to trust and just obey you, and you will work things out. Mm. Lord, I just release upon him just more wisdom, more peace, and more confirmation, God, from heaven to earth in his life. Because, God, you are the great I am, and he that is in you that are in him is greater than mm -hmm. the enemy that's in the world that comes against Bobby's life. So, Lord, right now, Lord, I pray a blessing upon him mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bobby, you're an encourager, um, and I just want to say that to you because uh, you have some an, a gift in you that, that you use a little bit, but God says as you use it more, it will grow in you more. And the Lord says as you encourage, you'll encourage yourself. It's like, you know, you're supposed to encourage yourself, and when you encourage other people, you become encouraged and therefore you grow as well so you're supposed to step out more and encourage and he says and stop apologizing yeah. for saying things that you're not sure they're going to take really well like you know I'm sorry but I have to say this or I need to say that God says don't apologize for my word and my move I'm just going to do it yeah. and so you don't have to apologize just because you're a little bit insecure he'll take care of all that yeah. so yeah I just want to bless you with that this morning. I just am really hearing that. I can I can really feel the Spirit of God this morning and just being an encourager in my life and your life through this prayer this morning, which I haven't got through yet. <laughs> so he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. And the Word of God teaches that if God be for me, then who can be against me? He says that I, being God, so God being who he is, lives inside of me. So me being Joyce, I have a power source within me who is able to do abundantly beyond all that I could ever ask or think. So the spirit of the living God who is in each and every one of us, who would have thought that baby Jesus came to save the world? Who would have thought in this little infant that he was going to be used to do, to do signs and miracles and wonders and change a world, amen, and defeat the enemy? Well, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world, right? And the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of you and lives inside of me. Amen? And so I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? That's what I want to know. Are you persuaded? So are you persuaded that you have a power source that's within you? Amen. 
that is able to do abundantly beyond more than you could ever ask. But beyond that is think, you know how sometimes we don't like let these little secrets out of our mind because people would think we're crazy. And I'm like, you see yourself a, a worship leader? Are you crazy? You know, and you don't say it. But what if it's the will of God? Amen. What if he can go and do beyond what you ask or what you think? Amen. Because he's God. He's the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Nothing and nobody can stand in, in the way of the will of the Father. Will you bind yourself to his will today? Amen. Will you bind yourself to the will of him for your future? Will you get out of the driver's seat and get over in the passenger seat and pretend like you can just let go and let God for just a moment <coughs> and then pretty soon you'll really be able to let go and let God. You know, sometimes we put God in the driver's seat, but we, we're, in, we're, in a, we're in a driver's ed, ed, education car. Car, Sorry, mouth isn't working right this morning. So we have like a brake on our side and a little steer over the here and there. Yeah, throw it out. Get a new car. Because we want Jesus to be the one. Yes. See, you got to bind yourself to his will every day. If you could do that, Shay, you would be such a happier man. Look how long you fought this, this place that you're in today. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it greater than what you thought it would be? You're working hard, you know, but you're a man of integrity, and you can work very, very hard. You're ready to provide for your family. God has brought you to a place where you're, like, ready to go for it. You've had to have some encouragement. You've had to have some people love on you, and God wouldn't let you leave the church because he knew that I would get on your butt. And, uh, but it's because I love you and I see you as you are in Christ, not what the world tried to tell you you were or even who you said you were. I see you to be more. That's how I want to see everybody. And I pray that you all see me that way because I'm more than what you see right here today. I'm more in Christ and he has more for me than where I'm at today. Amen. And I'm, I'm not looking to get ahead of him, but I certainly don't want to get behind him. Yes. I want to be in his perfect will. So I want to bind myself to his will every single day. And that's what you need to do. Because he is able to do abundantly more than you can ever think. Or even ever ask. Because he's the great I am. And he knows what your future looks like. You know, it's like, why do I can't? I, I'm trying so hard to get this job. And I know that God wants me to have it. But I just can't get it. Because it ain't his will. <laughs> it's your will. And we use God and we try to manipulate God and say, God, I just need you to do this for me because your word says, come on now. You said you will do this for me because you did it for so-and-so. And this is the scripture that you gave me and it works for me. This works for me. So now I need you to work it for me. It doesn't work that way. And I promise you that is when your greatest disappointment comes into your life when it comes to God. Because we believe the word, but we believe it here for it to work for us here. Instead of believing it here Amen. and letting it work through us. Amen. So when we believe it here, it's just a mind thing. The mind doesn't move God. The heart does. So when we believe from the heart that he's able to do more than what we could ever ask or think, we say, God, I don't know what it is, but I'm good for you to do it. Amen. Because it's more than I could ever ask or think, and I really don't know what you have for me, but I'll walk through those doors. Let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. I was a little bit embarrassed. So at, at Richard's funeral, um, I told you guys that when we went and seen him on, uh, on Friday, he passed on Saturday. Um, but So I sang Amazing Love over him, just the first verse in the chorus. Because that's all I kept hearing. That's all I kept hearing. That's all I kept hearing. And he opened his eyes and he said, that's just beautiful. He goes, would you sing that at my funeral? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I get outside in the car and Jan goes, look what you did. You just look at God. He's just, you know. So yesterday at the funeral, <laughs> um, this was quite a crowd. And I, I really was so honored to, yes. to, to, to be there and to be part of it with April and her brother and their whole family and all the friends. And, and, uh, but I'm standing up there like shaking, like y'all just have no idea. I feel like it's the first time that I preached and there was only two people in the room. This was a room full of people and I'm like, so I'm being me and because I am just who I am full of 
compassion and the love of Christ. I'm like, hey, you guys, like, so this is what, y'all know this Hobie, this Richard, you guys know him, right? So you know that he did all this. And he, che he chose you to be here. He told the kids what he wanted. There's all this music. And he chose me. And I said, so, <laughs> he wants me to sing. <laughs> I said, so bear with me. Because I'm, a, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm like shaking. They don't know. April knows. She knows me well enough. And if she could, uh, she's close enough. She probably could literally see the light. So when I started to sing, my voice was like, oh, man. You know, it was like just shaking so bad. But I didn't stop. I did not stop. As, as embarrassed as I was and knowing how horrible I sounded, it was that I fulfilled the will of God in my life that day and honored an amazing man that really, his, his names tell a story. Yeah. But, so as you bind yourself to the will of God, remember this story. Watch out. <laughs> but to be honest with you, it's not about the voice. Yes. It's not about the tune. It probably wasn't as bad as I'm making it to be. It but I promise you, Dan was there. He's like, you, you did good, Pastor. And I'm like, ah. I'm like, yeah, okay, thank you for that encouragement. I just want to go home now. You know? <laughs> but this is the thing. This is the thing. God moved in the heart of the people Amen. sitting in the room. Amen. Because, you see, Richard asked for this. He wanted this. He wanted the music that was played. He wanted it to be this way. And they honored him. And as horrible as I felt at that very moment, I was just so humbled. I pushed through it because I knew that God wanted me to do this. Amen. Amen. Little did I know the outcome of it. And I probably will never know the entire outcome of it. But I know that he did it through me, and it sounded the way it was supposed to sound. Because I binded myself to his will that day. Right? With all my heart... And with all my mind, I never want to lean to my own understanding. When God gave us those scriptures on the wall that say, I say those scriptures because there's one there and one there, that we're to trust him. We have to trust him. Not only as Jaira, our provider, but what about our healer? What about Rafa? But I'm not healed yet, God. Your word says his word doesn't change. And you didn't do something wrong because you're not healed. I don't know why some get healed and some don't. I know who she gave a testimony. She even put it on Facebook. I went to bed and slept all night long. I didn't have any pain back here and I didn't have no back pain. And I've been in pain for months now because Amen. he healed me, Amen. you know. I still pray over my feet every day. I'm believing for my feet every day. And I find that when I pray over my feet, I do better. I find when I forget to pray over my feet, I don't do so good. Yeah. But I don't stop. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we take the word and we, we say, God, you got to do this. Because your word says so. And, yes, we so desire it. But what if it isn't for our best interest or even the best interest of of our loved ones. As much as April would have loved to have her dad here for the next 40 years, she wouldn't want him back. Right. You know? Yeah. But because we know where he's at, and he's on that other side, and he's on that place where, where you wouldn't want him back. Right. He wouldn't want to come back as much as he misses yeah. his children, who he was extremely close to. Some of us have a hard time still with this, and I feel like I'm, I'm supposed to do this this morning. We gotta remember that we're not to lean to our own understanding. That we're to acknowledge him in all of our ways. We're to trust him regardless what we see, because faith is believing regardless what you see, regardless where you're at. 
Oh, man. You know, the Lord is just really moving me to do this, and I don't want to. And, um, but I'll do what he wants me to do because he's my Lord and my Savior. <sighs> he wants to keep our path straight. But our path will never be straight if we don't keep acknowledging him in all of our ways. If you're off the path today, it's probably because somewhere along the road, when you hit a fork, you didn't acknowledge him. You just thought, okay, this is the will of God. I'm going this way. How many of you done that? I'm like, I've done that. I can't even count how many times. And I've regretted it, and I've backed up to that point of that fork in the road, and I go the other way. Amen. Jan and I were talking this morning for just a little minute about our friend, and and I was telling her, you know, that one thing that when people ask my advice about stuff, I have an opinion, and I kind of think that I know what maybe a little bit of the answer is, but not always. But normally, 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 I'm, I try to get people to go ask the Lord. I encourage them that they hear God. And then I try to teach them very briefly that when you make a decision and you've been asking God for help and you make a decision and all of a sudden you continually question if that decision is right, to make the other decision. Go with the other choice that you had. And if you stop having questions and that little stirring like you have a peace, that's the way you go. Because God says that he will guide us and lead us by his peace. Yes. His peace, not my mind peace. Like, this is it. I know that guy's for me because I know that I know he looks good. He smells good. I'm going that way because I. he even talks about God. He, I can save him. It's the will of the Lord for me to save people. And you go down that path and you realize, oh, geez, yeah, that's. Oh, but I'm wrong. I, I'm supposed to do this. He's the man God said. If you back up and you go the other way, your flesh might miss that person, but your heart Amen. will be good. Amen. You will have a peace that passes your own understanding because that is the peace that we need so that we stay on the right path, so that we keep acknowledging him and doing what he asks us to do. Don't be disappointed when things don't turn out. I know you will be, but give that disappointment to God because disappointment brings anger, judgment, and then here we are. By the way, April, I need to tell you that the Lord softened my heart to such a great degree to your husband. I need to say this. I was going to tell you this privately. And... God showed me how much this man loves you. And God showed me that he's going to move. I'm going to talk to you about it later, but I, I need to tell you that today. Because I think sometimes you question and wonder, and God says to tell you that because he showed me him. I, like he showed me Shay. Like, I, I could see Shay in the flesh and see all about Shay, but God showed me Shay in the spirit. God showed me Brandon in the spirit yesterday, and I had to repent because sometimes we go by what we see with our eyes or what we hear with our ears. But when you look through the love of Jesus Christ, everybody looks different. Amen. Everybody. So here I am up front, and I'm seeing your husband, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, God, forgive me. I didn't know, and oh, my. And I'm having this conversation with him just before. But my heart just melted. I just, I feel like the Grinch, you know, with the little teeny heart, and it grew three times right there yesterday. Let your heart grow. Let your heart grow. You guys, listen. The gospel of the peace of Jesus Christ is at hand. This is the season. And if we keep judging people and we keep bringing them down to, our, to a level that we're not even at anymore, but the devil is using us and, and wanting us to be all critical and, and, and to judge people, even Christians, don't do it. It's a trap. Who cares? He died for them too. <laughs> Put on Christ and rock on. Yes. I, I'm thanking him that he died for me and he kept me and he took care of me. I don't know where I would be today. That's right. That's right. But my 
greatest prayer is, Lord, let me see how you see. I pray all the time, Lord, let me see. And he let me see yesterday how he sees. Not just Brandon, but I actually have a purpose for Brandon. God has put him there for me to do something with. But all those people that I was looking at yesterday, as scared as I was, shaking in my boots, I knew it didn't matter. It wasn't about me. It was what he wanted to do. Amen. And he moved. So he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Will I yield to him even though it makes me uncomfortable? I'm extremely embarrassed? Yes. And he used to say to me all the time, why do you do that? How do you do that? I'm amazed all the time. You'll just get up and you'll, you'll kneel in front of everybody. It took me obeying God to kneel. I'm sitting in the back of a church, very young, very young, a young mother trying to run after God. This, I knew Dee at this time in my life because she was a baby and I was a young 20s. She wasn't a baby, but you know, we're like 10 years apart, so I ain't telling you the ages, though. But anyways, so we go away on this retreat, and I'm with all these women, and I'm so excited. I, I was at the Baptist church, and they asked me to share at this women's thing, and I talked all about how I was the neck, and the neck controls the head and tells it what way to turn, you know, and how wrong it is, and, you know, and that's, but I was feisty, you know, and so, but through it, God showed me uh, oneness, and that's just not the way that it is. Love is what causes women to follow this does you're not going to get it so anyways <laughs> wisdom's up here guys um and here so anyways i'm in the back and they're having this altar call for women that aren't submissive right because it's all women i'm like oh i'm so glad i don't like to do that i finally got through that thank you god because i was so feisty you just don't even want to know and um and i had a hard man and uh so um, I started to submit because God changed my heart about it. And I, I, I was, it was to him. I didn't do stuff that wasn't right, though. I didn't, like, know, you know. But, um, but anyways, I was super excited. I kind of prideful standing back there. And the Holy Spirit says, I want you to kneel. Oh, excuse me, God, God I don't, I'm not a problem anymore, remember? I'm submissive. I'm good. I've overcome that. I want you to kneel. And the song's playing, and they're saying, you know, we're going to do this till the end of the song and just press in and repent. Let God just cleanse your heart. And I'm like, gosh. And he's telling me, I want you to kneel. I go, if I kneel, all these people are going to see that I'm kneeling, and they're going to know. Or they're going to think that I'm unsubmissive, that I'm like this bad sinner, and I'm not sinning anymore. Right? This is where I was at in life. I'm telling you, I was like 28 years old, maybe 27. And, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm past it. I'm good now. He said, then why aren't you on your knees? Because he was asking me to kneel. He says, it doesn't matter what people think about you. It's obedience to me, always. So it wasn't a big test on submission of me and my husband. It was for me to understand that when God moved me to move with him, and I learned that day. Now, not that I get it right all the time because I don't. But I was embarrassed, you know. The minute the last tune of the song was up, right away, I just kind of like, how you doing? So good. Yeah, God made me do that. I'm like, past it. I did that. Seriously, don't we do that? Like, okay, I'm submitting to you, God, but I'm going to let everybody know the whole story so they don't think that I'm really like that. Where in reality, I still was like that because I would have got on my knees at the very first prompting versus arguing with him because of what my face and my show would have looked like to other people. Isn't he a good God? Sometimes he's got to just teach us the hard way, and sometimes it's easy. That was the hard way for me. But I want you to know that God is on the move, and he wants you to understand who you are in him. He wants you to know that he gave you your personality for a reason, and he loves you. But he also wants you to know that none of us have arrived yet, and we're going to keep having our minds renewed and our hearts changed so that we can be used of him in a greater way. And just because you're not where you think that you need to be, you're not where you used to be. That's right. That's right. And so remember that God's going to take you where he wants you to be. It's a whole lot easier if you follow him, following his footprints versus being drug. And that's yeah. their about prints. That's not any fun. So um, I just really feel like... Um, we need to remember today that. And um, I was going to go to the scripture where it talks about, you know, that we used to be all these things, you know, 
but in Christ we're no longer these things. And you've all heard the scripture, but I want you to know that <clears throat> that who we used to be isn't who we are. The things that we did isn't who you are. Who you are is an amazing Amen. creation Amen. by God. Yes. These bodies are going to pass away. That's right. yeah. They're going to. Yeah. But you will not. Amen. You will be here, not here. Yeah. Yet. There's a new age coming. That's what the word teaches. But this is the thing. These bodies are going to go. Everything goes south. Everything. <laughs> Seriously, your face, your neck, all that. I'm like, get up there. You used to be up there, right? But you know what? It, this is intact. That's right. This is. This is. Yes. And I want him to continually change me from the inside out. Because I want to be bound to his will and do his will every day even if it embarrasses me yes. I, I don't want to do that today Lord but if you must I will but it keep, does keep me humble yeah. but what if God has gifted you with this beautiful voice and he wants you to use it for the kingdom of heaven use it don't judge yourself just use it what if he didn't give you a beautiful voice and he wants to use it for the kingdom of heaven use it just use it when I sang it over Richard at his house, it was beautiful. When I sang it yesterday, it wasn't so beautiful. Yes, it was. But but the truth of the matter is it was beautiful because of God. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know in the flesh, like, I know the difference in here. But the thing is, is I love that he, I love the humbleness that I walk away with because it means that I still have a compliable heart to the things of God regardless of my flesh. Amen. And he loves you. Let's pray. We're going to do um, You Are My King, so you'll have to go out and get it. I call it an amazing love. This is actually what was saying for Richard yesterday. And Lord, thank you for your amazing love and that you live inside of us. Thank you for all the word. This whole entire prayer is the word of God. Use it and apply it. Have us remember it. Have us to remember that we know in whom we believe and that we are persuaded that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That whatever we commit into your hands, Father God, you are able to take care of. That life and death is in the power of our tongues and therefore we're choosing to speak life and that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world and if God is for us, then who really is can be against us. That we do have a power source in us that's able to do abundantly more and beyond all, all that we could ever ask or think. And with all my heart, I'm going to choose not to lean to my own understanding. We are. We're going to acknowledge you in all our ways, and therefore, Lord, you will keep our path straight. <clears throat> Guide us today as we bind ourselves to the will of the Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.